Let me go back into the slides here and tell you what the next steps are. So once your QuickBooks Online file is set up, what you want to do is go through the preferences and see if there's any settings that you need to be turning on or off uh, initially uh, that, that are relevant to how your client is going to use QuickBooks or how you are going to be using QuickBooks if you're or if you're running all, all of your clients' books. We just click on the gear box on the top right next to the company name and we click on account and settings. And in the account and settings option, this is where I can change uh, things like uh, the fiscal year, I can close the books. I mean, this is all the areas where I can change uh, what, what they used to call preferences in the QuickBooks desktop world. If I click on the advanced tab, I will have access to uh, features like turning off multi-currency. Uh, this is actually where I go close the books. This is where I choose whether or not I want account numbers and certain other um, options that I can turn off, like a fiscal year, that sort of thing. That's all through the settings menu, okay? Now, if I click on the gearbox and click on manage users, this is where I, I get to add um, other users that are not necessarily an accountant, but this is where I can add the other users inside of the company. You know, let's say for example, there's a, an internal bookkeeper, there's a person that does uh, invoices, whatever, inside the, inside the company, not the accounting firm, but inside the company, uh, the actual business that you're managing through QuickBooks. You go to the gear menu and then you click on manage users. Okay, then after you set up uh, your QuickBooks Online account and you have the preferences set up, the next couple of things you want to do is set up your uh, clean up your chart of accounts, um, set up your 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 bank accounts and connect them to the bank, and you can all do that through the chart of accounts. So I'm going to show you that in a second once we do the demonstration, and then you can think about merging and deleting list entries. So if you have duplicate or redundant accounts duplicate or redundant customers if you happen to import the customers you can merge them by simply renaming one to have the name of the other one and i'll show you a demonstration of that and then if we click on the customers menu or the vendors menu on the left navigation bar we can actually create customers from scratch okay so let me do a demonstration of that before we jump into setting up online banking so let me go back into this new quickbooks online file that we set up Okay, and as I mentioned, we click on the gearbox, accountant and settings, and this is where we can change, we can add the company logo, change the company name, change the email. If I click on advanced, this is where I actually can, can do the closing of the books. This is where I can change the fiscal year. This is where I can enable and disable account numbers. That's all through these uh, accountant and settings. If I click on the gearbox, and then click on chart of accounts. So again, I clicked on the gear icon and go to chart of accounts. I get to see all my accounts that are set up already by default, okay? In some cases, there are accounts here that could be redundant. You know, let's say that for whatever reason, I know we don't have a lot of accounts here, for whatever reason, let's say that bank service charges and dues and subscriptions happen to be redundant accounts of some sort, for me to merge them together, that way that they don't, they're not separate. I just have to rename one to have the name of the other. So if I go edit, do some subscriptions, for example, so I click on edit, and I change the name to bank charges, and make sure that this name matches 100% the other name, and I hit save and close, QuickBooks will ask me to do a merge. Now it's really important that they have the same category, and the same detail type. So as long as I have the same category and the same detail type, it will, it will allow you to merge them. So I'm gonna click on save and close. Then it says, this will change how your accounts get reported. I'll say, yes, that's fine. And then it says, oh, I, I noticed that you have the other account that has the same name as this one. Is this what you're trying to do? Are you trying to merge them? So I'm gonna hit yes. And that will basically merge them together so I no longer have a dues and subscription account. Now, if you want to get rid of an account, an account that I don't want to use, uh, let's say for example, travel, I can just basically click on the little triangle and click on delete and hit yes, and that will delete the account. However, in QuickBooks Online, things really don't get deleted. They just get sort of inactivated. So if I click on the little gear here on the top right and click on include inactive, I can actually see this one called dues and subscriptions, 
call deleted, just showing you that there was a database, there was a, 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 an account in the database before with that name, and then there's travel that says deleted, right? And then I can make them inactive again by just clicking on make active. So that would actually make active will make it active again. That way it would be as if you never deleted it. Now you still merged it and merged all the transactions that went with it, but that's about it. Okay. Now let's go ahead and create a new bank account real quick. So I'm going to go to new and I'll click on bank and then I'll put here bank of America, save and close. Okay, and then from the chart of accounts, you can actually open up any of your registers. I'm going to do it with a bank account, which is easier to sort of see by just basically clicking on the view register button on the same line where the account is. So I'm going to click on view register. And that allows me to see all the debits and credits that went uh, through my bank. So right now I don't have any transactions, but if I create a new deposit, for example, and I'll put here opening balance. I'm going to put here 10,600. Okay. And I'll click save. Okay. Then it gets registered into the balance. And then I basically see the 10,600 on the opening balance. And then I see the running balance of that register. Okay. All right. So that's basically the basics of just kind of getting an understanding for what the chart of account looks like when you first start um, QuickBooks Online. Now, when you first set up an account, you're typically going to have two choices if, if you're not working with a 100% startup business. These choices are either convert from QuickBooks Desktop if they happen to be using QuickBooks Desktop before, or import your list from Excel if your client had an Excel-based accounting system or had some other accounting system that can export to Excel. So let me show you what that looks like first. So if I'm going to upload from QuickBooks Desktop, then I'm not going to upload from, it, from Excel. I'm going to use Desktop instead. But if I'm not going to upload from Desktop, then I can just click on the gear button and click on Import Data. And it will ask me, do you want to import customers, vendors, accounts, or products and services? We select the one that we want to import. So let's say, for example, I want to import customers. I'll click on customers. And then I can download a sample file to kind of see what that customer structure looks like before I import my list of customers with addresses, phone numbers, that sort of thing. Then I click on browse and then I, I add them. Now, if I was converting from QuickBooks Desktop instead of uploading from Excel, um, and I probably would have answered um, you know, QuickBooks Desktop in that beginning question that was asking me where my information was coming from. And QuickBooks will prompt you to, to then connect your QuickBooks desktop, which by the way, let me just switch over to QuickBooks um, online real quick. By the way, even if I missed that question, I could always click on the gear box and click on import desktop data. And that will actually uh, take me to the step-by-step -step on how to do it. Now, um, you know, we don't actually import QuickBooks desktop from QuickBooks Online, we do that from desktop directly and we push it into QuickBooks Online. So this page, all they really do is just kind of walk you through the important things you need to know before converting and then the step-by-steps uh, process that you have to take. So the next couple of slides, that's what I'm going to uh, show you. What are the step-by-step -step processes from going to QuickBooks Desktop into QuickBooks Online? So the first thing you want to do is open up QuickBooks Desktop in your PC and you want to press F2. Once you press F2, it's going to take you to the product information screen and in there it's going to give you um, one really, really important piece of information, which is total targets, total targets. So a target is a line item inside a transaction. So total targets would, will count every single line item across all transactions. And that's how QuickBooks sort of uh, 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 compares or measures how big the QuickBooks data file is and there are limitations if that target size is more than 350,000. So if you open up your QuickBooks desktop file and your targets are more than 350,000, you actually cannot import uh, your QuickBooks desktop file to QuickBooks Online. Now, you could do a condense 
if you're working with QuickBooks Online Accountant, you can do a condense, get rid of a few old transactions, um, maybe get rid of a couple of years, maybe just have last year or current year, and get under that 350,000 targets, and then you can transfer or convert to QuickBooks Online. All right, then afterwards, you double check that you had the 350,000 targets. Then what you want to do is you want to make sure your QuickBooks desktop file is free and clear of any uh, corruption. So you click on the file menu, click on utilities, click on verify data. You will go to the process of checking for corruption. If there isn't any, then you can go straight to uh, upload to QuickBooks Online. If there is some, it will prompt you to do a rebuild which is going to require for you to back up first and then do a rebuild. So that's a real common practice and I would write this down before converting to QuickBooks Online. It will be a very common practice for you to back up your file and then rebuild the, the, data, the data file. Then after the you checked that the targets were good, you were under 350,000, you checked that there was no corruption. If, if there was one, you backed up the file and did a rebuild. Then you're going to click on the company menu and then click on export company file to QuickBooks Online. So once you click on that, it will prompt you for your QuickBooks Online username and password. Um, so as long as you're the master admin, it will allow you to do the conversion. If your client is the master admin, then your client itself has to do the conversion. So make sure you're the master admin to do this process for your client. So we log in, put a username and password, and then we just wait. And, and literally when it's completed uploading, you're going to get an email. You need to wait for that email to tell you now it's safe to go to QuickBooks Online. Now the file is ready. The file has been fully converted, etc., etc. So you, you have to wait for that email after you, you press the conversion because you have to wait for the QuickBooks desktop file to finish uploading to QuickBooks Online. And yes, people ask me this all the time. Does my computer need to have internet access? In order for it to upload QuickBooks Online, the answer is yes, absolutely. Then after you get the email and you confirm that your QuickBooks Online file has been fully uploaded, what you want to do is pull a report with all profit and loss and balance sheet. So two reports, profit and loss and balance sheet. Run it for all dates. That way it has all the information, not just last year or last month or this year to date or whatever. Just run it for all dates and run it in a cruel basis. QuickBooks Online uses a different method for calculating cash basis that QuickBooks Desktop does. So we cannot use a QuickBooks Desktop cash basis report to, to compare to a converted QuickBooks Online cash basis report. So we must be using a cruel basis in order to compare whether the conversion was complete or accurate. In some cases, when you finish the conversion, you may have a couple of accounts be a little bit off. Okay, if, if these accounts are immaterial, you probably just want to do a journal entry to adjust them and move on. If the, uh, if the amounts are material, you may need to research account by account to see what came in differently what was missing or what number changed that caused the numbers not to be 100% uh, converted to the way you were expecting. Now, the last common setting that people do after they set up a new QuickBooks selling account, clean up the chart of accounts, import the data, is to connect the bank feeds, right? Because you want to sort of catch up and then move forward and be connected in real time with the bank to do all your transactions. So it's just some basic um, concepts on how to connect bank feeds. And then in module three, we'll speak more about that in detail, actually. But some of the basic areas on bank feeds is we're going to click on the transactions button on the left navigation bar. And then we're going to click on banking. And then on the top right, we're going to click on add account. The same way I added the account to the chart of accounts, but we're going to do it through online banking. Then it's going to ask you to log in, right? To uh, it'll ask you which bank are you using. You're going to put Bank of America, Chase, Wells Fargo, American Express, Capital One, whatever. You're going to put that there. You're going to put your username and password. 
it's going to log into your bank and it's going to retrieve up to 90 uh, days worth of transactions okay if you have multiple accounts connected to your online banking then it's going to ask you well which of your accounts do you want to download which of your accounts you want to connect to and then you can create a new chart of accounts account if that account is not in your quickbooks or you can link them together or map them together in in this screen now as i mentioned by default you would get no more than 90 days automatically connected if you need to connect more than that you can actually manually download a file for that and upload more than 90 days but generally it's up to 90 days and i do have the ability to get a little bit less so if I wanted to only get, for example, uh, 10 days worth of transactions, then I would download 30 and delete the last 20.